Hey guys, it's David from 3D Make It. Today we're going to be talking about the SX4. Finally, the review is here. Let's go! So we're going to be talking about the SX4 and we're going to talk about two iterations. The way I got it, so the stock setup, and what I did to it to upgrade it and make it a little bit better. Now, most of the hours I've put on the SX4 were all in the original condition. I've only upgraded it in the last month or so. So we'll have a good comparison of prints and how it actually works. So let's jump into it. Firstly, let's talk prints. And well, we've all seen those prints on YouTube and I have them too. Hey, look at my perfect little baby Groot. He's awesome. He came off great. Uh, I printed him in the Kodak uh, PLA Plus. And same thing with my little uh, astronaut Phil here. Can't see much layer lines. It looks okay. So prints out of the way. Let's talk machine. So the stock setup has the printer with a all metal ish as I mentioned in the first video check out the link um, has an all metal ish hot end now this is the hot end that comes with it and you can see if it's in my hand it's not on the printer anymore so this is one of the things I've changed it printed fine for the first oh four months and then I started getting some weird thermal issues and I, I kind of figured it out. But I'm going to zoom in on this a little manually. Here we go. Zoom. And we can see that it's kind of an E3D-ish setup with a giant aluminum heat sink. There's a little 3030 fan that sits in front of it. And then there's a little one here that cools the block as well as the part cooling fan underneath. So what happens with this? is when the filament goes in it goes down this Bowden tube and this Bowden tube actually goes right down to the um, hot end here so it goes through the heat zone so I don't think we can call it all metal so again all metal ish but it's not all metal the other thing is after four months of printing I started running into a lot of thermal runaway issues and it was driving me nuts at first I thought it was the JST connector couplers that are on the top of the machine like this one and so I made an effort to plug them all in better but it turns out it wasn't that at all it was actually this cheap um, heater cartridge so the heater cartridge in this one started to lose basically temperature like it could get up there but it wouldn't keep a stable temperature and the PID was crazy the temperature graphs that I got from Octoprint were super sinusoidal so they were just wavy all over the place and that was the first problem that I noticed with it so one thing to keep in mind is it seems like this hot end although it promises a lot does kind of not deliver a lot of people have been asking can you print flexible filament with this system and you can you just have to print a little slower because this Bowden tube and I'll show you a close up in a second but this Bowden tube is what enters from the drive extruder and what happens is this is actually bent forward a little bit so uh, you can see that it's kinked from being in the system so long and so what that does is it pushes the filament plant uh, path so Flexible filaments will work, but you run the risk of buckling since this is so far bent forward, the filament actually has to travel at an angle down. So this was one of the things that had to go, but it did work out of the box and it performed admirably for about four months. So from the standpoint of setting up your printer, getting it printing as soon as you get it, this worked fine. You don't need to worry about upgrading it right away. But remember, probably a PLA machine just because of the way the hot end is designed and the fact that this kinks. So we want to make sure that we're aware of those things. So the next thing we want to talk is safety. This machine does come well built. You do have two Meanwell branded power supplies running the whole thing. There is, however, a bit of an oversight, and I'm not sure if it's just an engineering design thing or maybe they just didn't know, but originally the printer comes with an SSR 
And this SSR is uh, AC-DC SSR. So basically once we get DC voltage to switch it on, on the one side, the AC will connect the path. So let me show you in a blown up diagram. So this is the original wiring of the power for the SX4. And we can see here that I've labeled AC and I've also have my dotted lines for negative and my plus for positive. And then from the AC power, you can see that the positive breaks off into the SSR and then out of the SSR. So this is the, the relay part. So this turns on when the controller sends the signal for the hotbed to turn on. Now here's where it gets fun. You can see that the AC is connected to the PSU and the SSR is positive out goes to the SSU or the PSU. So what happens is that when the bed gets the signal to turn on from the controller, so it sends the signal down and it goes, oh, it better turn on and closes this circuit here. It's turning on and off the power supply constantly to keep temperature. So it's on, off, on, off. And the first thing I noticed was the lights in the room were flickering because this kept going on and off, on and off, on and off. Puts incredible strain on the power supply and also the house power just to turn it on and off. Now it's worth noting that I'm in North America. I'm Canadian, if you didn't know, eh? And the AC actually comes with something that's missing here. And that's a ground. So this machine is not grounded to start with from the power. And I'd actually put my hands on top and feel a shock sometimes. So that was also an issue. Now here's what we did uh, to kind of fix that and mitigate it. So to get around this, what I did was first off, I took the link for the positive and just grabbed it and put it back to the mains. The next thing I did was I took the SSR and I switched that and we actually put a, a 30 amp MOSFET in there. So, oops, missed that S, sorry. So with that MOSFET, it's designed to interrupt the DC power instead of the AC. So what happens is, is this MOSFET ends up moving up here. And that line just went crazy, so let's just link it back over here. So same idea now, the controller takes that signal and it will send the signal to the MOSFET and the MOSFET now will turn off and on. So the MOSFET will interrupt the power. It only interrupts the positive. So again, you'll have your negative hooked right to the print bed where um, the positive will go through or some MOSFETs will put both connections in and the one that I use is a Lerge. So I'll show you what that looks like here. So this guy. It's just a Lerge MOSFET and you put your positive negative on one side, positive negative on the other side. And then you can see by my thumb here, there's a connector. So right there, there's a connector for the controller to plug into. And when that connection turns on and off, this MOSFET turns on and off, which will take the power and send it to the bed. So let's just flip back to that diagram. So we have the MOSFET in place now, so it's going to turn on and off. The power supply is always running, which is easier on our house power and the power supply. The only other thing that we had to add was one more line for ground. Now, the power supplies both have plus minus ground. So it wasn't too hard. We just had to run one extra wire here. So we grabbed a wire and we ran it from our AC and we ran it back so that we could have our ground so quick and dirty we're just going to do that for now and then same thing up here we just had another line for ground and so now that we have our grounds so those additional black lines without the plus the unit was now grounded which means now when I touch the frame I don't get electrocuted which is awesome um, now I only felt a little bit of a shock a buzz almost through the frame so it was grounded to the case uh, but it was not sufficient. So now since we have the main grounds going through and it's touching basically three different places, we're set up now for success. So this is the diagram, but let's show you what the actual printer looks like. All right, so here's the actual printer. So you can see here that I've ran a ground green wire down here. 
I'll just right click so you can see where I am right down there. And then the other thing I've done is we thickened up the gauge of wire a bit. Um, we were a little bit concerned about how thick the wire was. It was fine for the amperage, but we felt that just bumping it up a gauge would work. And you can see here, this is where the SSR used to be. And I've put my mount there for the uh, MOSFET. And then this is where I actually put my MOSFET behind one of those mounts up in this corner. And you can see that there's red, black, red, black, and here's the controller wire that comes back to the controller to turn it on and off. So that makes the whole system run a little bit better. The other thing that we did do, and I will show you in a second, is this. This is an SKR 1.3 from Big Tree Tech, and it is now the brains of my operation. It's running the 2208s, so they're in UART, it's super quiet. Let's just take a quick peek at the original controller. So the original controller that came with it is this guy. If you can see, it's an MPK V1. It's basically a clone of the Maker Base. It's from Hicktop. I did a little research on it. Uh, there are 4988 drivers in there. And you know what? It's adequate to run the board. There's a few things I've noticed, though. Um, if you can see the MOSFET here, all of them are kind of like janky and the heat sinks are funny so i didn't like that to start with but other than that it works okay one thing i'll mention too is that they use one connection so they basically splice one two cables into one jst connector for their z so you're not using actually all the stepper drivers on here and i just kept it the same so i'm still just using four to run the whole machine and it works out well so let's just stop right there and talk iteration one the way it came, the original control board, the original hot end. Would I buy it again like that? Yeah, I would. It printed right out of the box and it printed great. I didn't have any issues with any of the parts malfunctioning off the bat. I did have to replace one of the small 3030 fans on the side of that hot end. So it was this one that gave out on me. But other than that, I was happy. So why did I do the upgrades? Well. Let's talk iteration two. So iteration two, I think is probably a necessary update for some of the components. The first is the power upgrade. You should do it. It should be grounded. The power supply shouldn't be flickering off and on through the SSR. So get a MOSFET, update that. The second change is the controller. So the actual controller, the SKR, is a 32-bit board. So what does that mean? Well, Core XY uses more complex math to actually do the printing. So the 32-bit processor in it can handle that better, which means faster. I was able to go over 120 millimeters a second with good results with the new SKR board. The other thing is those 2208 steppers in UART. Um, it's loud. When I first put it together and started printing, I couldn't print with it and go to bed. I could hear it through the whole house. So that was a necessity for a quality of life thing for me and my wife. We needed it to be quieter so we could sleep. So the 2208s coupled with that SKR board were the solution to that. The last thing in version 2.0 was changing that goofy hot end. So I used some tiny machine links that I'll put down there uh, in the description from Thingiverse and I updated the hot end. So basically I bought an E3D Genuine from Spool3D in Calgary here. I printed all the parts in PETG. So let's see what that looks like. So you can see that the E3D upgrade changes a few things. So the cooling fans are no longer beside here. They're right directly in front and behind. The other thing that I love about this mod is the way this prints is you print it in two pieces and it clamps in the hot end and it screws right onto the mounting plate that's there, but it straightens this Bowden tube up. So now if you ask me, does it print flexible? My answer is yes. Yes, it does. It can print flexible and it can print flexible well. The next thing that it did change was that stupid heater cartridge it changes it out for the e3d v6 obvious genuine one which is much higher quality and my heat graphs are straight on no problem so i just ran through a quick pid settings and uh, away i went so the other thing that i did like about it was the fan before there was only a 3030 fan cooling it 
and E3Ds come with 3030s, but I wanted a little bit more, so I was able to put a 4040 on the front of this frame from Tiny Machines, and now it cools perfect. I don't have to worry about heat creep, and I get a nice consistent temperature, partly because of that silicone sock that gets added, which you cannot add to that other one. So just from the back side, you can see here that it's actually changed the cooling fan. So instead of using just a little blower fan like the Creality machines do, the 40 ones, I was able to upgrade it. And the fan now blows through a duct and it actually covers the whole print. And that way I get nice, cool, even prints and really, really good bridging, which is insane now. The other thing that moves is the BL Touch. The nice thing about this whole mod is the fact that everything BL TouchWise is in the stock position. So you can grab the firmware from Aia or Mamaruba, the same company, and use the exact same settings from the firmware you had and just adjust the Z offset when you install your BL Touch. One thing I will point out though is this design seems to be made for a cloned V6. So what happens is the heater block's a little bit bigger on the real ones. So I had to print a shim just to move the whole thing back a bit to fit in that gap there. Other than that, it's been working perfect and I'm happy with it. I'll put that link again down in the description. So if you want to proceed with this route, you for sure can. So the last thing I did was change out where this filament was coming from. The Mamarubot usually has it coming from the back corner through a white tube. And what I've done is I've actually just put a spool holder above the printer and it feeds directly down and loading this thing has never been easier. It's straight down through that straight filament path now. And it's, uh, it's a headache saver. It's one that you should definitely do. The other thing is, is I have this rail that I've modified and printed so that I could zip all of my cables nice and tight to it. And that tube is still here. It's actually sitting right behind this cable here. And that's actually what's guiding my cables to the center of the printer until I get my drag chain printed. So before I wrap up this whole review, I just want to throw out there that the changes I made, lots of them can be done for free or close to. You can print that hot end attachment, but you do have to buy the V6. So if you go clone, you save a little bit of money. If you buy genuine, you're spending about 70 bucks Canadian. So 50 American maybe, I'm not sure. The other thing is, is the SKR. I ordered that from AliExpress, got it to come in uh, with the stepper drivers. I bought the ones that were in UART already, but I've soldered many, many of those together as well. So that whole board cost about 50 bucks. So all in all, you're sitting at around $120 in upgrades with the MOSFET, the controller, and the cloned hot end. So there you have it, the SX4. It's a giant Core XY printer, and it's a mean machine. It prints and it prints and it prints. I've had very little problems with it. The upgrades I did were mostly cosmetic. I could have just threw a new heater cartridge in and kept going with the current hot end, but I thought while I was doing that, I might as well get a real V6 on there with the silicone sock. It's one of those printers that it's my go-to. I, I like printing on it in either iteration. Hiya has some new models coming out. The SX2 should be out now. The SX4, it's revision versions, but it's gonna be really close to the one that I have. So this review should help you out if you're wanting to buy an SX4. So again, all the printed parts for the hot end were from Tiny Machines on Thingiverse. And I'll put those down in the link. I just used the hot end parts and the BL Touch. He actually has a whole system for the drag chain if you wanna go that route. Um, but I didn't yet. I might. The other thing is, is lots of the parts we made for mounting the SKR board and the MOSFETs and that little cable management rail. And I'm going to put those on Thingiverse. We'll throw them down in the link for you guys so you can use them if you're ever upgrading this printer. So this has been a walk down memory lane. Thanks for joining me. I hope you like this review. It helps you if you're going to buy an SX4. It's one of those printers that's a good price and it's Core XY. So you're going to get a nice stable print. You guys are awesome. Hit that like and subscribe button to keep on following us and get in tune for those new videos. Have a good one.